Plains hognose snakes like petunia here and corn snakes are both awesome North American colubrid snakes that make great pets. But which of these two snakes is right for you? Well, that's what we're gonna try to get to the bottom of today. I'm Raph the human, this is Petunia, the Plains hognose snake, and we'll be meeting Stevie the corn snake soon. Let's get down to business. Let's start by talking about the setup and care necessary for a Plains hognose snake. First thing I want to mention, and if you've followed this channel at all, really, you know, I don't like the idea of keeping reptiles or, and, and really any animal on paper towel. I think you miss a lot of like enrichment opportunity and natural behaviors from the animals because uh, none of these animals in nature live on paper towel. But seeing Plains hognose snakes, really any hognose snake, on paper towel really grinds my gears more than usual and that's because it's a burrowing species okay you don't have a nose like that for decoration this nose is a shovel it serves a real purpose for these guys digging through looking for their primary food which would be amphibians so i really do believe you are going to need a loose substrate uh, safe things like play sand and coconut core mixed together. That's what I use for petunia here And that way she can do all the little hog nose things that she wants to do Including popping out of the dirt wearing a little dirt hat, which is just adorable You are gonna want a little bit of a basking area so snakes like petunia can reach their ideal Digesting and metabolic temperatures again being a North American colubrid You're not gonna have to make some kind of crazy 120 degree basking area or anything like that Something about 90 degrees is gonna work. And with most snakes, it seems that UVB lighting is not necessary, but it could be helpful. But you can achieve the heat requirements necessary for hognose snakes with just a heat mat and a thermostat attached to your enclosure. Also, Petunia is a bit of a small female hognose snake. I think her growth was kind of stunted from her early life, not getting the optimal care. But the females of this species can get around three feet. So it's a, it's a decent sized snake, but definitely not a huge snake. Males will likely stay under two foot so you you can get away with something like a 40 gallon enclosure and that will probably be big enough for your hog nose for the duration of its life and these are pretty easy to find commercially available pretty much any pet shop that has reptiles will have something like a 40 gallon breeder and that's all you really need for your uh, pretzel snake it's a pretzel snake and for these reasons we are going to give the hog nose snake 4.5 out of 5 points for setup and care. And now moving on to little Miss Stevie, the corn snake. Now corn snakes are about as easy as it gets. I've heard of these guys kept with no heat at all really, just in a warm enough room. And that's a testament to them being a North American colubrid that is also very hardy. They do experience summertime temperatures in the Southeast. So why not offer them a little bit of heat as well, much like the hognose snake about 90 degrees and you can set that with a thermostat and a heat mat on their enclosure, very easy. The big difference here is while I mentioned hognose snakes will top out at about three feet, uh, this is potentially a six foot snake. Stevie is still a sub adult, I would say. So obviously she's not a huge snake yet, but when they do reach this adult size, five feet, six feet, you're gonna want at least a four foot by two foot by two foot enclosure. That's 120 gallons. Now these are more difficult to get than a 40 gallon, like for the hog nose snake, but they are available commercially and the prices seem to be going down. There are a lot of companies that do a good job making larger enclosures like this that many of our animals should be in, but for so long were hard to get or way too expensive. A lot of these companies are doing a better job about making them more available to you. Namely, and I have no affiliation to them, but dubieroaches.com's reptile habitats are awesome, cheap, easy to put together, lightweight, uh, I do recommend them and you can find a nice four foot by two foot by two foot enclosure. Perfect for an adult corn snake pretty easily online. Again, these guys seem to just be so hardy and all the info's out there. They've been kept in captivity for a long time. So we are going to give them four and a half out of five points for the setup and care. On to the diet of the Plains Hognose Snake. As I was kind of mentioning earlier in the wild, these guys are not gonna necessarily specialize in amphibians, things like small frogs and toads, 
but they do eat them quite a bit. And for that reason, they can be hard to start as babies on a rodent diet, which it kind of fits into her pediculture better. Most people have rodents to feed their snakes and a good breeder will switch the baby snakes over before they sell it to you. So really you shouldn't run into a snag with this. So you can feed them rodents their whole life, but being that in the wild, they're taking in a lot of these amphibians and stuff, it's probably good to mix in things like reptilinks, which come in various flavors and it's basically just ground up animal. There's like a lizard flavor and all that too. And uh, it might be beneficial to add this to your hognose snakes diet so it can get a closer nutritional profile to what it's getting in the wild. Again, it's hard to get these things perfect with any animal that you're keeping in captivity because again, this is not their native habitat, but we can do our best. So it is worth considering adding that to the diet of your captive hognose. Also the metabolism on these guys seems to be pretty fast. I know that because Petunia was even lighter than she was now when we first got her. And then, you know, we fed her a bunch and she got to this nice bulky size. And then I started feeding her once a week, which is pretty normal for most captive snakes or colubrids anyway. And she kind of shrunk again. So <laughs> we, we are putting her back on every five days a meal. I think this means that the metabolism is a little bit faster, so it might be optimal to feed this animal every five days. Keep an eye on your animal's body condition. Maybe you can get away with every week or so, but... Uh, it's worth considering. She also poops a whole bunch multiple times a week, which tells me that the metabolism is moving faster than some other snakes. And for these reasons, the hognose snake earns four out of five points in the diet category. Onto the diet of a corn snake. These guys are fairly enthusiastic eaters, so you could probably convince it to eat anything that a snake could properly eat. Namely, mainly mice, okay? They really, you know, I've heard of some people feeding them rats. Rat even a small rat is a, a bit of a large meal for these guys when they hit adults. Now, maybe uh, since the bones are denser and stuff, if you want to give something like rat pups instead of, instead of jumbo mice, a comparably sized rat to the mouse that you would be feeding these guys, that's probably not a bad thing to do. I just, I wouldn't get crazy and see how big of a rat you could feed your corn snake, even if it's full size. And like I was saying, you can definitely mix it up with small birds as well. I see no reason why these guys would not take small birds in the wild. And this will help you achieve things like a nutritional balance, kind of like what we were talking about with the hognose snake and also enrichment, you know, a new smell, something new to go after. Maybe they don't even want it, but at least uh, you tried something and Guys, it's a snake, you know, you can skip a meal per se, like, especially if you offer it and it doesn't want it, like, it can wait till next week, you know, you'll be, you'll be fine, Stevie. Stevie might not be fine. Stevie loves food. And as, as adults, it seems you could feed these guys every week or two, which is very manageable. And you know, when they're younger, like pretty much any reptile, you're going to feed them more often. So maybe every five days to definitely a week, you know, you might not want to skip weeks when they're when they're all tiny and stuff like that. Very easy, breezy, beautiful Stevie girl. Four and a half out of five points. On to the animal's personality and the joy of interacting with them. Now, this is a very fun, inquisitive little snake to handle, uh, even when she just ties herself up like this. Let's get her out of it. Let's get her out of the knot. I suppose it's worth mentioning she is the only snake that I have that will tie herself into a knot and kind of want to avoid that. You know, I don't know what's if she got nervous or something, she tightens up too much anyway. But these guys can be a little bit defensive. They get huffy and puffy. They even hood up their neck to pretend they're a little cobra to try to scare you away. This can make some people uncomfortable. I mean, if you just reach in and your adorable little snake that looks like couldn't hurt a fly, and then all of a sudden it, it's hissing at you, huffing and puffing, bluff striking at you. It's worth mentioning, but with just some work socializing the animal, this happens less and less and less. I don't think Petunia sees very well, so sometimes if she's napping and she doesn't know that I'm coming towards her, uh, you know, she'll get a little bit defensive right at the start, but then once I get her out of the cage, she's just like this. Also, of course, everything with a mouth can bite. Petunia is actually the only snake I've had that has bitten me. And this was not her fault. This is when she was living at her, her last home. As I mentioned, she was not getting all the feedings necessary. And she definitely thought my finger was just food because I got a little careless grabbing at her and I stuck my finger right in front of her face. And for me, it was no big deal. But this is a rear fang venomous snake. This is not medically significant venom per se, unless you're allergic to it. Uh, some people describe it like a bee sting, and it takes them a little time to chew that that saliva is what it is that causes this reaction. It takes a little while to chew that in you, 
And she was on my finger for a good little bit because I didn't want to force her off and, and hurt her or anything like that. But I didn't react at all. Some people talk about maybe a puffy arm or hand or something like that. To my knowledge, nobody's ever died from this. This is not a medically significant snake. But it is worth noting when we're talking about what's the better snake for you, I want you guys to be aware. For these reasons, we give the hognose snake three and a half out of five points for the personality and interaction. And you guys know this is my favorite category, the personality and interaction with your corn snake. Corn snakes have a fantastic demeanor. Kind of like I talked about last week with bearded dragons being the gold standard of reptile interactions and whatnot, this you could argue is a very close second. I mean, this is her, you know, very inquisitive, which is fun because she moves a little more than something like a ball python when you have them out of the enclosure, but uh, not flighty at all. And this is the case for many corn snakes. You might find a, you know, you might find a, a weirdo that doesn't like you that much, but I think a little bit of socialization and you guys are gonna get along just great. There is the feeding mode thing, kind of like we mentioned with the hognose snake as well. If she thinks she's eating and I just stick my hand right at her face, yeah, she might bite thinking that it's food. But once you break that food mode, and some people don't believe in the modes of snakes, but I think it's a great way to simplify what's going on with them. You know, you can easily take a snake out of food mode by touching it, all right? at least in my experience, and then you have this mode, the kind of just inquisitive mode and looking around. As I mentioned, generally pretty calm and, and not fast moving, even when uh, she's trying to get somewhere, she stays nice and slow. I think the size is kind of perfect. As I mentioned, she's not full grown yet. I think she might be a little small, but when she hits that adult size, I mean, it, it it's great. It's not a huge snake. It's not a tiny snake, still pretty impressive, still fun. And what's nice about these guys, and I didn't mention about the hognose snake, these guys will constrict and are good at climbing things and whatnot. I, I've heard them described as terrestrial. It's probably semi-arboreal. Uh, I've seen clips of them up in treetops, actually, so maybe even more than semi-arboreal. So you're going to want to offer some climbing opportunities as well. But this fact that she can, she's basically handling me more than I'm handling her, okay? Yeah. See, open hand, she's just doing her thing. Honestly, I think that makes great interaction with snakes because they get to feel comfortable and perched and they do what they wanna do and they get to kind of control the interaction uh, while you're secretly in control of the interaction. It's nice, it's very nice. 4.5 out of possible five points for the corn snake in this category. So we do have a winner in case your mental math skills are not the best, let me lay it out for you. The hognose snake scored 12 out of a possible 15 points, and the corn snake scored 13 and a half out of 15 possible points. I think it's possible that there's no better pet reptile than a corn snake. And I think that there are other people that would say the same thing. And for these reasons, I'm confident in the answer that we came to today, but it's worth saying that that does not mean that the hognose snake is not an amazing pet snake. I do think it is. I think it's very fun. If that's more your style, then good on you. And I think you'll have a great time, an easy enough time keeping them right because they're also not rocket science. I just think the corn snake gets a little bit of an edge. And like I said, over pretty much any pet reptile. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I think Stevie has said all she wanted to say today. And we thank you so much for watching another Red Ribbon Reptiles video. If you enjoyed, hey, there's that like button and that subscribe button it means a whole lot to us. And leave a comment if you think I'm right, wrong, whatever you gotta say. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.